All right, let's take apart the uh, Baofeng UV5R Mini. Um, obviously, you first uh, turn it off if it's on. Um, at the bottom is the battery release. Pull it forward on the radio and then down with the battery to release it. Get that out of the way. On the top, the volume knob pulls straight up and off. The um, two nuts on the volume knob and the antenna uh, connector do need to come off first. Apologize to those who watched the um, quenching video. Uh, those nuts actually were against the case most of the time. We think maybe there were some manufacturing defects sometime where they put them on top of the case, but uh, on the Mini it's definitely on top. You need to take these off before you can get inside. So you can use a, a snap ring plier if you have one. I don't. So I'm just going with a small um, flathead blade um, and carefully prying that against the the uh, turn of the nut uh, to get that loosened and off. You could also use some uh, needle nose pliers there. <clears throat> Same thing with the volume knob. Get a little leverage here. Try not to let that so slip and uh, guide your fingers, right? <clears throat> All right, with those off, there are two Torx screws at the bottom of the radio. That is a T8. Um, this magnesium inner is pretty tight inside the plastic chassis, so um, use a slim flat blade screwdriver. And um, I like to go in at either the edges here where the magnesium comes up and joins with the plastic. Just get it in there and pry up. It should release. There is a both a flex cable and a speaker cable there. So you can see both of those are connected. Uh, so be careful not to just rip those out when you take it apart. There's also a, a rubber cover here on the uh, ports that you can take off. The flux cables uh, disconnect by releasing these connectors towards the direction of the ribbon cable. Uh, if you have a plastic spudger, you can use that or carefully with a metal screwdriver. Fingernails work just fine too. Um, just release it from both ends, push toward the cable. And now that latch is open and the cable comes out. I'm just going to leave the speaker cable there for now. There are one, two, three, four, five screws. Um, these screws go through both the display and the magnesium inner, so they'll have to both come off. Um, that hole down there wasn't populated when I opened mine up, so I don't know if you might find it's populated on some of your radios. Um, Pretty much any uh, Phillips head will uh, get those off, out. And when you've got the display loose, there is another flex cable behind it. So be careful not to pull that up with too much force. Again, you can just release those latches. Fingernails work fine. The gate's open now, so the ribbon cable should come out easily without a lot of force. You shouldn't need to force these or else the gate is still closed. And now the PCB all comes right off the back. And there's most of our circuit there. Let's wrap up by taking a look at a couple of the uh, parts that we can identify and the different bits and pieces inside here. Um, first part is the front panel. There is a little circuit board that's got, uh, I think, maybe a FET for driving the LED to light up the uh, control panel there. Um, but otherwise, it's just a handful of uh, passive components and the uh, flex adapter connector. Um, on the main board itself, you've got the usual complement of ports. Of course, you've got the, uh, the Kenwood uh, headset adapter ports. 
um, your uh, um, on off switch is built in uh, to the volume knob, uh, flashlight, LED, and the usual antenna connector. Um, note that there is no USB connector um, for charging here on the main board because they put the USB connector and charging circuit right in the battery. So that's completely separate and can charge when the battery is off the radio, which is handy. And there's a little LED uh, indicator on that battery as well for charging. Um, inside the uh, main board itself, uh, a couple of the interesting chips. Of course, you've got the, uh, the main MCU. Um, they have sanded that off. There's no identifiers on that. Um, it's probably one of their usual ARM cores or something like that, but I haven't ident identified that part just yet. Um, the uh, RF transceiver uh, circuitry is all over here. Um, it's kind of the usual uh, uh, FD6818 that we've seen on a lot of other uh, um, radios. So that should be uh, pretty familiar. Um, and probably the usual EEPROM there. Um, notice the EEPROM is uh, uh, double footprinted. So it's got the usual footprint for uh, whatever it is, like a three or five millimeter wide uh, SOIC. And then it's got a second set of footprints out there so that if you have an EEPROM chip that's wider, it's gonna fit on that footprint there as well. So that could be interesting to uh, potentially rework or swap out the chip in the future. Um, this device does have Bluetooth built in, so you can use Bluetooth to send to your or uh, send memories and receive memories uh, using your phone. There's a mobile app for it, so we can see the um, onboard antenna there um, is connected. Looks like to the MCU. I believe the way the setup there is um, is that this chip is only for uh, the high power uh, TXRX transceiving, and that the uh, Bluetooth is actually built into the main MCU there. Haven't quite confirmed that yet or, or owned that antenna out, but that's the way it looks from the, uh, the geography and the orientation. Um, also, while we're in that vicinity, I noticed there's a really interesting looking uh, you know, debugger programming port uh, labeled uh, uh, VGMP. Um, so I have confirmed that um, V and G are voltage and ground, um, that MCU level voltage of 3.3. Um, and ground. Uh, don't know what M and P are yet, but uh, we'll probably find out in the future. Um, the uh, main um, power amps, of course, are kind of in the usual spot up here on the way to the antenna. So you've got a couple of, uh, of uh, driver or power related ICs. Interestingly, um, they have a heat sink on the back. Notice there's this chunk of metal here acting as a heat sink on the back of those um, power MOSFETs. Um, and then they have the coils here actually rest into the thermal pad um, on the, uh, the alloy case. Um, so those imprints there are not from the FETs, they're actually from the coils themselves that rest in there and are being uh, uh, thermally transferred to the main case. So they must be getting uh, um, some kind of heating effect happening on those coils there while it's uh, transmitting. Um, other interesting things that are left, um, there's a couple of markings on the board. So, uh, Board uh, fabrication date appears to be uh, work week 26 of 25. That fits as being um, uh, this year, uh, late this year. Um, the uh, marking on the board itself is the 5R Mini 1.6, uh, dated 2025-06-09. So just uh, 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 taped out um, or fabricated uh, in June of this year. And then last item of interest for some folks might be the display here. Um, you can see in other review videos, it's actually a pretty decent looking uh, color display. Um, and it's got this flex cable uh, with 24 pins on the flex connector. Not specifically familiar with that connector uh, layout, but some folks might know that already. Um, and it is encased completely in a uh, RF can um, or for mounting. Uh, so eventually might uh, unsolder some of those corners and get inside there and see the details on that display as well. But that's the, the main display. I'll post some uh, high-res pictures of the circuit board um, on my GitHub uh, linked in the description, but that's the uh, UV5R Mini.